I think the Cappadocians, um, because they have to grapple with uh, the issues on the one hand of uh, radical Arianism, which is the Animoam anim anim movement with, headed by Eunomius. So you've got the denial of the, the eternal deity of the spirit and the sun on the one hand. And always in the background is lurking the modalism of the, the uh, th uh, third century. Uh, that they needed to make clear that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit were not the same person. That on that level uh, there were distinctions between the three. And thus you find in the uh, Cappadocians this kind of hammering out of how the persons are distinct from uh, one another. Um, it's the Cappadocians, I think, who crystallize, especially with regard to the Holy Spirit, that he proceeds, and th the proper, appropriate name for his distinction from the Father and the Son is procession. I think with the claim that some make that uh, a difference in um, property or function uh, necessitates an ontological difference, uh, that, that fails to understand the, the nuances of uh, classical Trinitarian thought. Uh, the fathers were quite clear that there are differences between the persons and there's a difference in terms of taxes or order uh, which has implications for authority. It was not the father who became incarnate but the son and therefore there, there is a it's a given that there are differences between the persons yet that in no way at least in fourth century classical Trinitarian theology in no way implies an ontological difference or an ontological subordination. Um, they uh, again with the Cappadocians, they are uh, they 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 always have present in their minds uh, origin and his his uh, initial attempts to frame a uh, biblical understanding of uh, the Trinity, but he was hampered for a variety of reasons, and there are elements of subordinationism that dog some of his statements, and the the fathers the the Cappadocian fathers are determined to overcome this but without compromising the fact that it, there is an order within the Godhead that the normal uh, designation of the three is Father, Son, Spirit um, and that it was the Son who became incarnate, not the Father. I think eternal generation does imply a, an order of authority. Um, it's the Father who begets the Son and so the, the, the Cappadocians can even talk about the Father as the Fons Deitatis, as the, the source of Godhead. They don't mean by that that the Son and the Spirit are any less God, but they're thinking in terms of the personhood of the three, and that there is therefore a, um, a priority. The Father has a logical priority. Um, it's not a temporal priority because the, 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 the eternal generation of the Son is indeed that it's eternal but it's it's not the father if the son does not generate the father it's the father generates the son which implies an element of authority there I think uh, in the, in the uh, Cappadocian's thought or contemporary discussions about um, uh, the the um, classical model uh, which want to assert that because there is an ontological equality or an ontological sameness that therefore that eliminates any sort of authority between the three. Um, I think that fails to, 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 to grapple the fact that the, the issue of ontological oneness is on the level of being. And the, on the level of person, there is a distinction that has to be made, and the Father is the one who generates the Son. It's never vice versa. Um, and that, that generation of the Son implies then that the Father has a, there is a sense in which the Father is over the Son, there is a sense that that I think that's a given. Would would the, the cap um, Augustine's I think big contribution, and I think the 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 standard line that has been part of the popular discourse about the classical understanding of the Trinity in the twentieth century, the the Cappadocians begin with the three, and Augustine begins with the one. And thus there is a nascent modalism in Augustinian Trinitarianism, which is uh, um, bedeviled uh, Western Trinitarian thought ever since. I, I think that's a fallacious understanding. Um, I think the truth of the matter is, as you examine uh, 
uh, Augustinian Trinitarian thought is very similar in certain respects to Gregory Nazianzus' Trinitarian thought. Probably the great contribution, I think, in my mind, from, of Augustine's Trinitarianism is his argumentation that uh, the Holy Spirit is the bond of union between the Father and the Son. He is the nexus um, uh, of love that unites Father and Son, and that, that, that nexus of love is himself a person. Uh, he probably derived this to some degree from Marius Victorinus, a Latin church father immediately preceding Augustine, and maybe even Hilary of Poitiers. But it definitely is a, is, is, a, is a prominent theme in Augustinian thought. No, no. I think what he means, uh, from one level what he means by that is because there is an ontological unity and because the Son and the Spirit are both fully God, they share in one another's work and in the Father's work. But if, if, uh, if um, he were to take that to the logical conclusion and that there is no limit uh, to the, the um, distinctne distinctiveness of the work of the persons, then what he would be logically arguing is that the Father was crucified and the Spirit was crucified, which is again modalism. Um, I think, uh, and again, this is this is uh, this is something that he. It's not unique to him. Athanasius had argued this back in his letters to Serapion in uh, the th uh, 350, 358, 359. And what they're again they're seeking to secure is the complete deity of the Father, a uh, complete deity of the Spirit of the Son. Is that all that the Father does in some way impl uh, implicates? or involves the Spirit and the Son. Yeah, yeah and again, as I say, I, I, as I think I argued with regard to the Cappadocians, I think uh, Augustine's working within the same sort of paradigm. Um, he too has a, a, a very live opponent in Arianism in North Africa. Uh, the Vandals who came across and took North Africa uh, had uh, Arian thought in their midst. And so he's grappling with Arianism and trying to deny uh, the argumentation that the Son is inferior to the Father ontologically. But at the same time, he also uh, is trying to, in his affirmation of the ontological oneness of the Father and the Son and the Spirit, uh, recognize that there are, there are differences. And the eternal generation of the Son, uh, as for the Cappadocians, implies an element in his mind of the authority of the Father over the the Son and the Spirit. It's the, the very fact that the, the, the Son is the one who is sent into the world and he comes at the bidding of the Father uh, indicates that there is, a, there is a willingness of the Son to do the bidding of the Father, implies the authority of the Father. And so there is a functional difference there, but this functional difference in no way uh, um, implies an ontological subordinationism.